You are listening to the Main Event Moto Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, producer Joe Gallo. We're going to get DB on the phone in just a second. But before we do, we got to thank these sponsors, including Fly Racing, Mika Metals, Motosport.com, Scott Goggles, No Toil, Guts Racing. Shout out to Andy Gregg. EMT Racing, Blenzall, All-American Chevy of Colleen, Old Me Creations, DRS Suspension, and our new homies over at Unita. We love all of our sponsors, and we love most of our listeners. And we love it when our listeners use our sponsors. All right? All right. Let's get the man on the phone. What's up, brother? Hey, man. Oh, man. How you doing, man? So good. In the ATL right now. How's the, how's the ATL life? Oh, it's been, well, you know, it's funny. I'm not in the ATL. I'm by the airport, which is, I mean, I guess it's Atlanta, but it's, I haven't been even on that side. Like it's I'm way out there. I've been nowhere. Yeah. I've been nowhere near Atlanta. I've been at the airport and then down at the motor speedway. So it's good though. That I mean, the trip's been good. It's the weather's pretty nice. Even a little bit of rain or the sun wasn't bad. It was a little hot yesterday, but been a good trip so far. I, I feel good. Surprisingly for being an East coast one, you know, normally when I come all the way East or I feel wiped out. I, for some reason, the time change hits harder. But this one, uh, I think maybe adapted quicker. Maybe because we had that day race, the first, the first one, you know. So I, I kind of feel like I got with it quick. This has been an easier trip than the last couple. One of the most important questions, and I ask this every time you go. Elantra. Are, are the are the strip clubs open? Oh no, <laughs> I don't know. I thought you were going to ask what kind of rental car I had. Um, Elan- oh, that's her name. That Elantra is her name. A lot, yeah, that's her name. Is um, <laughs> yeah, actually, her name is on her birth certificate is Hyundai. Uh, <laughs> they go, she goes by Elantra. Oh, you got an you got an Asian stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I don't I don't know um, I don't know. I know that Dunkin' Donuts is open and Chick Fil A is open because that's been about it. That's what matters. Every every morning. Oh, that's what sucks. So this hotel, I, I this is like like just whining and unnecessary whining, but whatever. I'm in a super ball and hotel that has no coffee. Like there's no coffee at Starbucks or anything. So I got to get in my rental car every morning and drive to Duncan, sit in line forever. It must be like a commuter stop, like where all the commuters are in the morning and then come back. So it's like an hour to go like two miles and get a coffee every morning. So that's the one part of this trip that has sucked. Um, But otherwise everything else has been perfect. That's rough, dude. You got it rough. (laughs) Ah, Sorry. So what? let's let's you get, let's get into the nitty gritty. First of all, right off the bat, I hate I hate McAdoo. <laughs> I, I can't stand the guy now because right, hold on hold on hold on. I have to try to figure this out. All right. All right, give me a shot at it. Well, we were me and my lady were watching Blair's breakdown, and she saw your discussion with McAdoo, and she was like, "He's hot." Oh no. And so oh, he, no. he's like her new favorite rider. And so since, so since RJ hasn't been racing in a while, yes. she, she just lost, she lost interest out of sight, out of on. mind. She moved on and she saw this dude do his gymnastics routine with a dirt bike. And then, uh, she saw your interview with him and now that's the new heartthrob. Wow. So I can't, right. I, I can't stand this guy. So that, and that comes back onto me since I did the video with him. Is that, <laughs> is that what you're saying? This is all my fault. Yes. It's all your fault. Okay, well, I apologize, Joe, and um, I'm sure you'll get through it like you got through RJ. I was like, what? Who- Damn, he's a handsome man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a girlfriend that's a country singer star, too. Oh, that's and right. You know that. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even say it. I know what you want to say. Just, <laughs> just, just stop it, Joe. No, but seriously, though, what, like a book. what a handsome beast that, that kid is, dude. That is just insane. The internet so, is on. So, he oh, broke the internet. On, no. Stop it. So after everything that that guy went through last night and today, and what, that's what you came away with it? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the character trait that you're going to use to that's describe right. the that's dude right. that did the gnarliest thing ever? Yeah. You're going to go just at the looks, okay? We're right. petty. We're petty out here, bro. You're petty, for sure. You're petty. <laughs> Oh man, what'd you what'd you think of that? Seriously though, I was like, like, oh, like step in by shock. Step. What'd you think about that when it happened? Like, what what was your your first thought? My first thought was, what the f- <laughs> uh, my jaw on the floor? Like, oh my god, did that just happen? Like, first, I was like, what it what just happened? First of all, is what I thought. I'm like, please do a replay as soon as possible. I was like, Bondo, please do a replay. And hey, they. 
and they they got to it. They got the, yeah. the angles of it. Oh yeah, the side and the front and and just like man, holy I, uh, shit. I don't know. Like I, I, I mean, yeah. Obviously, I'm doing my job, but at the same time, I'm I'm a person, so I have just you know, I can for a minute break away from being a, a commentator and just be myself. And I'm like, I mean, I was like, gutted. I was like, you know, scared. The first thought on that one is like scared, right? Like, oh my gosh, you don't see him that violent, you know? And that's a crazy thing too with this sport. Sometimes you have these crazy crashes, nothing happens to the guy. Then you have sometimes a guy will wash out or something silly and then he's like hurt really bad, right? So in this sport, you, you, you never know. Yeah. But when you see that, the first thought is like, for me was like fear, like, Oh yeah, because that was just you don't see him like that that often. I I don't know that for me I, that was the, my first instinct was like afraid. You know? Sure, of course you you immediately think the worst. You can't help it, especially when it's so dramatic and animated of a crash like that. Yeah, he um and he's a tough dude. I mean it, he's he's taking some some shots. So like he's a tough guy. So I'm thinking, okay, wow, he's he's getting up and you know it's all good. And then. Well, and he was holding his wrist, so I just assumed he was done I, for the night. Yeah, I, I, I did too. And you know what's weird is when you hold the wrist, you kind of you don't know what that means all the way. Sometimes it's like a shoulder or a collarbone. So, I, I, you know, and, and immediately once he's up, I'm like, thank, like grateful, right? He's up. That's awesome. But now I'm thinking, wow, the championship. Holy cow, this just changed the whole. This wow, the whole story changed, right? I mean, my opener at the top of the show was McAdoo and Cooper. Like it was two people, you know. And then I'm thinking that that's over. And then all of a sudden I'm with Nick way and we're sitting there and Cameron's back on his bike. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's awesome. He's going to, you know, ride back to the pits. That's what I thought. <laughs> Duty road to the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now I'll back, back we're going to play a little game of ping pong here. Back to you, Joe. What, what are you thinking then? So I'm thinking like, I, I was, I, I don't even know the, the, the I was flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. I think that works. I think that works. <laughs> I was uh, I was in shock. I was like, no way. Like, did did they just give this kid a, a shot of uh, whatever that stuff is? You know, like the what, which one? Like cortisone? The, yeah, like, like a cortisone shot. Like whatever I, that whatever I that magic that cocktail is in the NBA when like the guy goes into the locker room, you know, with a broken leg and he runs out five minutes later and he's ready to play again. Like, and, he, and he's like faster and stronger than yeah, he was in the first half. Yeah. Of the game. Did they just give this kid the magic cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so i for me i i'll tell you right now the rest all kind of blurred through for me because i'm obviously listening on the headset to what's going on um i got nick way right there so he's kind of in my ear a little bit i'm kind of walking to see what's going on so the whole rest of it kind of blurred to me until like after it was all all done but all of a sudden he's on the gate and the gate goes down and he's out front yeah like i mean i i I'm thinking to myself, is this real? Like, can you even write this? <laughs> I Are know. You, like, serious? Like, I, what? I, I, don't, I was just like, I, I mean, I guess I was shocked. Again, another, I, I guess, shocked for like the fourth time probably. But shocked that he comes around the first corner like in the lead. Or, or, <laughs> what are you thinking then, Joe? I, so at first, I was like, did he just get the whole shot? And then, you know, it kind of thinned out and it was... But I was like, no, he's... But he's still up front. Like, he's up in the top, you know, five, top four... And then the battle ensued, and I was like, oh, dude, I, you cannot, like you said, you cannot write something like this. You can't write it better than this. The storyline, like we always talk about, incredible storyline for this round. Yeah, uh, it, incredible. And then, um, yeah, passes his way. Pa I mean, passes in the whoops, passes in the sand, gets himself up into second. And then I talked to him today on, on the breakdown. You saw the, the Blair's breakdown video. His legs got tired, he said, to where he couldn't squeeze the bike anymore. That's why at the end he faded off. He said he didn't get tired like racer tired. It was like, dude, my legs, I can't squeeze as tight as I was. And those whoops in the sand were gnarly. So he, I think he just was like, I, if I go for it here, I could really blow this or I could take take the podium. I think that's what he did and made the call to just accept it. Because you notice he didn't fight back yeah. like at all. And, and he fights back all the time. Okay. So I... I think that was just a conscious decision in the moment. Like, man, I, I'm getting a whole lot out of this main event. I can't squeeze very tight. I'm going to ride it in. Yeah. You tell he kind of picked it up because Thrasher got back close to him. And then he kind of like picked it back up on the last lap to guarantee that, that podium. So, uh, moving on to on the podium interview, like, I, I mean, what do you, just the words he said, I, what, what did you think overall in just what McAdoo said on the podium? 
all uh, just all American hero. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, are you respecting him and hating him at this time, or did the, uh, or did the affection at, at, from at, the misses come after? At like, that when, moment, oh, that came today. That mo- that came no, today. that came that came today. At that moment, it was just pure respect. Like you know, as every uh, like just like everybody is giving this dude now, industry wide, all the fans and you know nothing but respect. Just incredible and, until until today when. The, the tables have turned Until and now today you're when, mortal, mortal, your mortal enemy. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. I see how that goes with you. That was quick. Um, <laughs> no, it was wild, Joe. I got to be honest. Obviously, you watched it, so you're you're going to feel that, how it felt to you on the screen. I mean, I could just tell you the whole the whole thing was, was weird. I'll always remember it. Just that that ha- it was just it was just weird. You know, I mean, I, I feel like these guys are all heroes, dude. They all they're all gnarly. They're the gnarly dudes. They, they crash. They they work hard, and they're all, to me, just the best of the best. But there's certain things that happen at a certain race that you'll just always remember, like, man, I remember that one and the way I felt at that one. You know, for me, it's the, the AC interview after Vegas. Like, I'll never forget that. That was a, a hard moment for me, and I'll just I'll, I could go back to that moment and feel that. This is one of those, I think, where I'll always go, man, I remember that night. That was a confusing, like, encouraging, but terrifying, like, all those emotions all at the exact same time. That makes sense. You know? <clears throat> yeah, this will be. So I just this is one of those moments. This is a historic. It was a historical <laughs> moment in the sport that people will reminisce about and talk about, and you know, for years and years and years to come. Anytime, yeah. anytime you talk about Supercrosses in Atlanta, this will inevitably get mentioned. Yeah, um, you see the coverage it's been getting today. Just that yes. um, that Colts yeah. punter um, Pat is it McAf- McAfee McAfee uh, McAfee McAfee. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, he's got his own podcast and his own show and he was talking about it today on Twitter. Like, I mean, he's got a huge audience and he's talking about super cross guys. And then you got, um, uh, outkick outkick did an article and it was on their homepage. You go to outkick.com, which covers the NFL NBA. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a, that's a big outlet. Yeah. They, they cover everything. Yeah. That's my favorite sports outlet right there. Outkick. Yeah. So I, I mean, it's crazy. Like you're waiting for like a moment for, for I mean, you're just wondering, like, what about Supercross could catch the interest of people? And I guess it, it takes a moment like that. You know what I mean? You, you you got the different eras. You got the McGrath era, the dominating era, the King. You got the Pastrana angle, which obviously he did a lot. You, and then you forget sometimes, like, moments like these actually can go a long way, too. It's it's a different style of, of I don't know. It's a, it's a different look at the sport. You know what I mean? It's crazy to see these national outlets like taking interest because of what they saw and they all saw it too. And they were like, what just happened? And I don't know, man. It's just, like I said, it's a moment. I, it's a, it's a race. I will never, I like some of these races blur together, man. I can't remember like Houston too, but dude, I don't remember what happened. This one. I won't forget. That's all I'm saying. Likewise. Yeah. Um, moving on, 250. What else? 250, 250. I don't know. What else caught your eye? Uh, Justin Cooper. Um, yeah, I, I think um, it, it, worldwide, everybody is really impressed with McAdoo. But if there's one guy besides me now who is not really a biggest, the biggest fan at the moment, it's probably Justin Cooper. I think I know you're going with this. You talk about that interview. Yeah, the interview. yeah. I knew you're going to go there. I wish I kind of was hoping we would blow past and you'd forget. Um, <laughs> oh man, that that one's hard for me because I, I here, here's I guess let me explain what I think he. Let me can I all right? Can I pl- let's play a little game, Joe? Let me let me pr- let me f- try to explain what I think he meant okay. in a better way. Is that is that all right? And then yeah. you tell me if it was good enough. So he's fighting for a championship. This would be his first one. He's getting it together. He's obviously in a tough fight. Cameron's been legit. And you're leading the race. You come over the tabletop, and your competitor is laid out there. Now, obviously, I don't think he's the type of person or any of these are like, good, I hope he's I hope he's broken. You know what I mean? I don't think he's like that. But still, in the moment, your first thought goes, okay, what are the implications with this? And how does it affect me? Well, it affects Justin Cooper a lot. You know what I mean? Like your main rival is now out. And and th- at that point, he didn't have the red flag yet. So he's still, he's thinking this thing's a go. I'm going to win. And he's a lap down. He's going to be out, whatever. this. Then the red flag comes out. And he's thinking like a lot of people are. I was like, oh, he can't race. He was, you know, he was part of the red flag or he was down. When I don't, I don't know the exact rule. I got 2,000 screenshots sent at me last night and I didn't read them all. Sorry, I was tired. 
So I don't know the exact rule on how that works, but I'm thinking Cooper's thinking, you know, this is still like an advantage for me. Um, and it's not, I don't think it's bad for him to think that way. I mean, these guys are all wound up pretty tight. They're trying to win a championship. You're, you're going to immediately hope the other guy's fine and then go back to your own scenario, right? Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. So then McAdoo lines up and races and then is in front of you in the first turn and ends up on the podium. So now instead of 26 point gain, you're getting, what do you gain? Five on him. Dude, if you're him, you're probably like, man, that is not how this should have happened. Like, that guy was on the side of the track down. I lapped him before the red flag, but now he's up and on the podium. So if you're Justin Cooper, you're probably bent a little bit, right? Just oh, yeah. over the rules. Not over, not at Cameron, the person, but no. over the rules. Yes. So this is where I, I personally think he just made the mistake. There's sometimes you need to keep your private feelings to yourself, and doesn't mean you go up on the podium and lie, but you can go up on the podium and maybe avoid some things that probably should be kept inside a little bit. And I think he just messed up and goes up there and is like probably still a little flustered by it all. And halfway sort of revealed that he was frustrated by it. Cause I didn't think it was like a really, it wasn't like an aggressive comment. It was just, he kind of let out his feelings and it seemed like un, untimed or poor timed. You know what I mean? Oh, interesting and, to hear you say that. Cause uh, you're the first guy to say that you love the, you like the the blood. You like the, the I, back and forth, and him him letting a couple of salty comments slide. That's and and using even the word salty is like putting more weight on it than it should have. Had. Yeah, because because it, it wasn't salty yeah. like to him as the person. It was salty at the to situation. The yeah, which I have no problem with. I um, you know it, it's it's part well, of the storyline. Okay, okay, so I'm with you on the sense I. I I want honesty. I mean, that's what we want out of these guys, right? We cry about it all the time. We, yeah, we don't want the canned and response. Honest. We don't want the dungy response every time. Which is crazy, though, because I feel like, I don't remember when, but I feel like we've had the same exact discussion about him. Did he Did he do something last year or something? I feel like last year something happened kind of the same. I don't remember, but I feel like it was where I was like, eh, maybe you don't say that. And we oh, were like, wait a minute, yeah. you're supposed to say that. Ooh, I can't remember it was him. Maybe it was Forkner. I can't it might have been either. But yeah, it was it was the same scenario where if I see somebody or hear somebody bashing Justin Cooper for making his quote salty comment, I'm like, well, that's what we want though. We don't want a boring canned response all the time. <clears throat> I, I and I agree. So my first thought is yes, I want these riders to be open generally and pour it out and tell it how it is. But there are scenarios where I, as like a brand manager of a rider, if I was a rider's brand manager, there's certain things that I would say, hey, stay away from certain things that you may feel that may make you look bad in certain times. You know what I mean? Sure. I did, like I said, if he was to say it this week and maybe explain himself in a long form interview, people wouldn't go on his Instagram and blow it out. The problem is McAdoo was like the crowd hero to everyone watching at that very moment that he went on the stage and kind of threw out a little salt. So it was the time, you know what I mean? Like if, yeah. if Cooper comes out today and does a long form interview and explains it like I did and just kind of like slowly walks through it, there's nothing, there is nothing. So for me, it, it wasn't so much what he said because what he said was pretty true. Like, like, Hey, what did the guy, why did the guy get to race? Like, I didn't think he was going to get to, you know what I mean? Like I understand why he said it. I just think the timing of it was just, not only was it not good timing, it was the absolute worst timing. You it was you, right after the race. It was, <laughs> and I mean, everyone you're one hundred percent right. Standing. You're totally everyone right. Everyone at home was still standing, Joe. Were, no one had <laughs> still sat standing back down and cheering. Yet. Yeah, you're you're totally right, and that's why uh, you know for Main Event Motor, you're the brand manager, and I'm not because I a brand managers they got to look out for that kind of stuff. And, that's, and if you were if you were running it. <laughs> yeah, we'd be getting booed left and right all the time. We would, we would be. We would be having a lot of problems if a you lot were of the problems. brand manager. That's why I put it on Toolman Dan. Let him run the brand <laughs> online. Which, by the way, he's doing a great job. Fabulous job, Toolman uh, Dan. Dan, he does a great job. Um, so that's my thought on Justin Cooper, and I, I'm, I might get hit for this. People might be like, people might think that people might still think what he said was salty. Might think what I'm saying is salty, and there's there's enough salt to go around. There's so plenty if I'm of wrong salt. here, there, there's plenty of salt. Um, but that's my thought on Cooper. I don't think what he said was <laughs> out of bounds. I really don't. I just think the timing on it was the absolute worst. And I he agree. needs to be more aware of that. That's all I'm saying. Because what he was really thinking, it, it, it wasn't as bad as it sounded because it sounded that way because of the timing. That was it. 
I That's totally it. agree. Do the interview over two days later. No one says a word. It's just bad timing, bro. Everyone was still cheering. There was still popcorn flying through the air in everyone's living room. It's not the time <laughs> to say that about the hero of the night. Um, so the, the, the one, the, the, I, I wanted to mention <clears throat> this before I forget, you know, how uh, we're, you know, we're nickname guys. We're last name guys. We're always keeping track of that stuff. Uh, the oh, yeah. last one we really liked was hammocker. We were calling him haymaker. And yeah. I, I can never, I always forget to mention this to you, but whenever I see the dude's name on TV, I always try to make a mental note. The baddest dude's name on the track, besides champion, of course, which is a given, like, <laughs> come on, dude, like, really? Can't be better. Like, your your last name is champion. Get the, like, what? But regardless. Your, your last name might as well be badass. You, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like in the movie, there's like two dudes who are like equally as good, right? And the good guy's last name would be champion. And the right. other dude who's really good, but he's like the bad guy. That's yeah. that's Thrasher. <laughs> I'm, this whole time you're leading me up to this, I'm I'm thinking, who is he talking about? Like who? I'm I'm trying to go through the list of writers. Dude, I'm that, thinking 250 class. That like, kid, that 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 name Thrasher, bro. That's got to be up there with Champion. Is like one of the baddest. You know what the funny part is, Joe? Is we've like not talked about him that much, and you obviously haven't commented because I. I, I don't think you've paid attention. He hasn't really been up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's funny that as soon as I get to Atlanta, he wins one and now he's up there again. And now you're like, Hey, Thrasher. Thrasher, like, bro. Joe, he has been around all season long. He's had a cool name <laughs> well, since round one. You know, you got to get in the spotlight once in a while if you want to get recognized. And, yeah, you hey, know, shout for out. All you riders out there, Joe ain't looking outside the top five. No. Nothing to do with What's you. What's the point? No. <laughs> M- make some moves, get a little light on you, and then we'll talk about you. So, Joe, is it safe to say if you're sixth or worse, you get no <laughs> love from Joe? No, not that. I'd say. 11th or worse no just top 10 i I think six would be good let's say (laughs) let's just say six just agree all right all right that's fine cool that's fine all right so cooper got sixth uh cooper webb got six so what do you say to that then no love (laughs) 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 yeah you know what you know what you didn't take the bait i got you back there i convinced you but it was cheap i wanted you to just accept the sixth on your own and then that that, my joke would have been better but yeah you you snuck out of that one, but no, I'm making an exception. I'm making an exception for Webby. Um, all right, so Thrasher though, um, yeah, he's oh, wow, come around, huh? That was two good races in a row. Two good races, incredible last name. He's had his whole life. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's going to do big things. <laughs> Thrasher, dude, can you imagine him in kindergarten? Um, like, what are, what are the T's like? Uh, Thompson, um, <laughs> Thrasher. <laughs> Thrasher, <laughs> little kid puts his hand up in the. He's had a, here. That all kid the, was born. Look around. That kid was born with a mohawk, bro. Like that's just <laughs> how it is. Well, did you see his? I mean, he wasn't. If you heard his interview from the, <laughs> he's a country boy. He he did not have a mohawk. Maybe a mullet, <laughs> uh, but not a mohawk. But dude, yeah, could you imagine him though in like grade school? Just like every kid is like probably so jealous. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. How, who's your best friend? Ah. Uh, Thrasher. Oh, it really? just looks so yeah. badass. Whatever sport he played, like if he was in football or whatever, he has oh. his last name on the back of his jersey. And if he was in football, what position? I, I kind of see like a middle linebacker. Dude. I was going like to say a back of some sort for sure. Or a safety, a strong safety that just takes off heads, dude. Thrasher. <laughs> dude, it is sick, though. I mean, I just, I do wonder what childhood was like with that, though. That's like, it's probably it's too cool. Like, I feel like you got to grow into that, you know, but he, he came right out with that. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, he looked good and he does have a sick name. I've thought that for a while, but I, I it took you to bring it out and really paint it, paint the picture on, <laughs> on the name. But yeah, I like the, I like it on the back of a football jersey, though. I think of a middle linebacker. Totally. For the Bears, uh, back in the, the, you know, yeah, like an Erlacher. He's, looks, he's an Erlacher 2.0. Yeah, there you go. Uh, anything else? 250s? Uh, uh, Hunter, Hunter was good. Yeah, Hunter, um, Hunter was decent. I don't know. Class is wild, though. Um, it's they're def- all over the place. It's definitely, de- yeah, it's delivering the entertainment for sure. I mean.
Main, main Event Moto. All American Chevrolet in Killeen, Texas is a proud supporter of Main Event Moto and invites all the moto heads to experience the difference for all of your Chevy sales and service needs. Mention Main Event Moto and get 50% off your next oil change and a front end alignment at no charge. Remember, whether you're hauling your bikes to the weekend track, trail, or race, or commuting to the job that pays for your moto habit, we have the truck to get you there in style. Visit us online anytime at ChevyColleen.com. That's all American Chevrolet of Killeen. Chevy. Find new roads. Look good? Check. Protection? Check. Fly Racing has had the gear game on lock for years, but the Formula Helmet has taken Fly to another level. They didn't just make a high-quality helmet, they redefined the standard for the most important piece of safety equipment on a rider's body. Use your head and protect your head. Run the Fly Formula Helmet. Then cover the rest of your body in Fly's evolution and kinetic gear lines. Easy decision. There's a reason I run DRS suspension and race tech hard parts with Mika Metals chains, bars, and sprockets on Evan 65. First off, DRS suspension settings work everywhere. I haven't changed a clicker since I put them on. Maybe it's the internals from race tech that give it that extra something. American made products with a 100% guarantee. You don't see that every day. Yeah, the DRS race tech combo works for me. And what can I say about Mika? First off, they've been with us since the beginning. The quality of their bars is top of the line and Mika is the only chain and sprocket combo I run. Motoheads, get with the program. It's DRS Suspension, Race Tech, Mika Metals. Say it again. It's DRS Suspension, Race Tech, Mika Metals. Is that good, Joe? Yeah. Joe, when I think of Blenzol, I think of the smell because it's so good. But that's not fair because it's the quality of their products that really stands out. Go to Blenzol.com and take a look at the catalog. Two-stroke, four-stroke, they got everything that you need for your motorcycle and it's top quality. I used to be in the oil industry. I know the difference between crappy oil and good oil. Blenzol.com has the best. Check them out. That's what the Motoheads run. Walk out in your garage. Take a look at your bike. You know your graphics are roasted and you need a new set. That's why you go to Old Me Creations to freshen up. High quality, good looks. They are the choice of the moto heads. That's why you need to put some Old Me Creations on your bike. Not everybody's like Tool Man Dan and washes their bike more than they actually ride it. So your bike is probably hammered and it needs some Old Me Creations stat. Again, quality, style, they got you covered. That's why the moto heads run Old Me Creations. Joe, I have an idea. Yeah. Screen printing done. We got to do their commercial, right? Yes, we do. Let's do a commercial slash tease where we tease our new t-shirt coming out in March. Ooh, wee. But then also mention how Neil's the man in screenprintingdone.com is who does all of our stuff. Right. Isn't that kind of a good idea? Like I think a commercial it is. slash tease right there? Yeah. Well, Neil is the man. You yes. go to screenprintingdone.com if you want to get something custom done like we do. And of course, when March hits, you get that Made of Moto t-shirt done by Neil at ScreenPrintingDone.com. Yeah. So can you turn this into the commercial? I think we can. What do you got to do to do it? I think we just did. If you're a true moto head, then motosport.com is your only choice when it comes to OEM or aftermarket parts for your bike. And when it comes to servicing your bike or giving it the punch you need to perform, it's EMT Racing. With motosport.com, you can get everything you need for your bike with great pricing and ridiculous speed on shipping. And with EMT, it's simple. Take your bike to the experts. 2020 is the year EMT takes over the performance world. If you don't know, now you know. Your bat bros choose motosport.com and EMT Racing, and you should too. I love when NorCal companies take the world by storm. Guts Racing seat covers and no-toll filters are made right here at home, but their products travel the country and world on some of the baddest dudes' bikes in pro racing. Who runs Guts? Too many factory teams to list, Joe. Who runs No-Toil? Well, it's the only filter Chad Reed will run. Guts and No-Toil make only the best. So visit GutsRacing.com and NoToil.com and step up your game, Motoheads. Joe, you ever heard the saying, happy wife, happy life? Oh, yeah. My wife is stoked because I got her some CBD from Uinta Health. That's uintahealth.com. Now, check it out. 100% made in the USA. The hemp is grown on the family farm. There's no pesticides. It's THC-free. Everything is 25% off on the website. Third-party lab tested. These guys crush it, and they are now part of Main Event Moto. So go to uintahealth.com. That's U I N. T-A-H health.com and get some CBD. I'm a believer. I tested it. I tried it. I believe. Motoheads, give it a shot. UintahHealth.com. Main Event Moto Podcast.
we, mean, you we, know might, if, we might have three really tight titles in Utah. That's pretty good. Son of a bitch. <laughs> what? Well, I don't mind the two two fifties being tight, but I don't want a oh I don't want a tight four fifty. And after last night, it's obviously a lot tighter now. All right. Well, let's start there. Um, what? How much money would you have put on Kenny to win Tuesday night? Mm, not that much, man. I I I just I'm not you know I I'm in the I'm in the minority when I just I don't see it in him that often. I know he's great. I know he's in the best in the world category, but you know, I wouldn't have put money on it. Were you, I mean, just after Saturdays, dude, where he got ninth, right? I, I'm thinking the wheels are off. That's exactly what I thought. That's what I, 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 I mean, I didn't even put him in my top five on Rocky Mount or RM fantasy on race day live, dude. I didn't, I don't, I didn't put him in my top five. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, I just, I had lost, I lost faith and I mean, they did on their site too. They didn't have him on the podium. I don't think they had him on their top five. It was, I mean, dude, coming in, all right, like just the way it looked on Saturday, it's a two-day turnaround. I'm, I'm just thinking the wheels are off, man. And I, I, and then he was fast in practice. And I'm like, okay, that you know, he, he can do that. He's Ken Rocks. And then, he, ooh, the heat race goes good. I'm like, wow, we got something here. And then, dude, he he just slapped him. I mean, what what else do you say, Joe? He he just checked out. That was that was as clean and perfect as could be. There was nothing. It was flawless. Yeah, it was on for him. It was a, it was just an, uh, it was a weird night. Odd podium. I mean, let's just keep it real. Anderson and Muskin, like what? Uh, just or Sexton and oh, or Sexton. Anderson, sorry, Sexton. Anderson Sexton. Sorry. Yeah, uh, um, this is odd podium. I forgot Muskin won his heat race, but um, it's just we're a, gonna get to that. I, I do have a, I have a little weird question on that. See if you notice. Something. Kind of an Go odd, ahead. just odd podium. That's all. Yeah, um, I mean, because you just, I guess we're so spoiled to the idea of it being Kenny or Eli or Cooper and usually at least two of the three, right? And that's a, I, that's a wow, that's a cool stat. I got to go find that. But I wonder how many races this year, you know, not more than two of those guys were off of it. You know what I mean? Like, usually you get a combo of Cooper and Eli or Eli and Kenny or Kenny and Cooper. Like, it's always two of the three. And a lot of the times it's three of the three. Yeah. But yeah, to have it just be Kenny, and then you get Chase in there for a second one. Anderson gets his second podium. I, I think he got one a few weeks back. Um, you know what I mean? Like that was just—it was like refreshing to me, right? Did it feel that way to you? Just to get some new names that are up there, legit on the podium? Hell no! Uh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Sorry, we're okay. I mean, sorry. We'll if get you to that. If, if if Webby if if Webby had got you know if, drop if, drop that. Drop that part of it. If he was in Roxon's place, then I'd be fine with Sexton and Anderson. But yeah, if, if you drop that, then I wouldn't want to see K Rock on the podium either. I want to see a whole fresh trio up there. Like pick somebody Blessinger, random. Anderson, yeah, Sexton. That would be that would well, be beautiful. Okay. But here's what's crazy to me is it usually would take you know some kind of a you know an issue with Eli or an issue with Cooper or you know a variable to for for those guys to straight up beat Eli and straight up beat Cooper. But Sexton and Anderson did straight up beat them both. So I, I just, I, and I mean, even Barsha, Barsha was fourth. Well, so let me, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Let me ask you this. Cause we'll talk about the Barsha thing here in a sec too, but with Webb, with, with that in mind, was there some sort of uh, mentality with him, in your opinion, of managing this, the, the damage, so to speak. So he wasn't as aggressive <laughs> With those guys, mm, I my my honest opinion is he's struggling with the track. Hmm. Um, I really I really do. Some I li- I like I like what you're saying. What, what, maybe he was caught off guard. Is well, that what you're saying like caught he, off guard, but n- didn't want to get too aggressive. Maybe risk some sort of you know didn't want to risk even more damage. Maybe letting them pass hmm. and then getting them back eventually. Because you know, remember we always pride him on his racecraft. And so and they were kind of punking him, huh? I was wondering if he was maybe pulling again, not to, you know, another Dungy reference, mm. but if he was pulling a Dungy sort of thing. I don't know. I'm have to, let me dig into that a little bit because he was definitely very passive in the very beginning. They were, they were, they were picking on him. And then he, he like put his heels in the ground. Right. And was like, okay, uh, I've had enough of that. And then charged back and kind of like woke him up a little bit. So I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to find out. Was it a track issue that it took him a while to get comfortable, or was it a mentality issue where he was like, "Okay, I don't do anything dumb here," and then all of a sudden they're just swarming him, right? Yeah. Like it, it seemed like he he seemed like he was a little caught off guard because he wasn't fighting back very hard. Uh, Anderson got him; he didn't really respond. Barsha got him; he didn't respond. Sexton got him; didn't respond. You know what I mean? So, well, no, actually, that's not fair. We didn't catch it on camera, but Sexton 
um, past Cooper. Cooper did get him back once, and then Sexton got him again. And I think we, I don't know if we caught that. For some reason, I think we missed that. Um, but so he fought back a little bit, but you know what I mean? Like he didn't look like the feisty fighter that we're used to. He looked a little passive the first five minutes. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Mm. I'll have to look into that. My, my theory is that he just, he's just not gelling and he's having a hard time with the track. And then even when he got it together, it was more because he's a good racer, not because he actually found speed. Mm. Uh, so I, my, I guess my big concern though, Joe, and this is going to crush your feelings, but got to say it. If you leave that race and get to go home for a week and then come back to a new venue, it, it feels a little different. He's got to come right back here on Saturday on that same track and turn it around. You know what I mean? In yeah, three days yeah. at the same place that he, he visually to me struggled. I could tell. Yeah. So I think this is harder because it's like, oh, yeah, I'm here. I can turn it around. No, you're, you didn't ride very well. And everyone else did. Like everyone else is flying out there. So for Cooper, he's going to have to either find some new speed or he's going to have to really, really be crafty with his racing to limit the damage. Because if Kenny gets out front again, he's gone. I'll tell you that right now. When Kenny's good, Kenny, you ain't catching him. And I'm just saying, if he comes around the lead again on the first lap, it's over. Kenny's checking out. So for Cooper, it might not be a matter of beating Kenny. It might be a matter of how much little amount can I give up on the next one. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if he's second or third on the start... I don't know if he's going to have, um, I don't know if he's going to be able to run down Kenny here. So then it comes down to how, how strong can you ride to stay on the podium and minimize the damage? Right. And so tell me if this, this might just be my bias because I'm, you know, Webb's boy, but, uh, uh, it seems to me, and I might be biased and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, like you said, they're picking on him. They're gunning for Webb more than maybe another potential points hmm. leader. Uh, am I wrong? Well, no, you're not wrong. I don't think it's. I don't think it's conscious. I think it's more subconscious. Because I, you know what b- I mean. Because like, I look at Barsha point. doing that. Barsha, that uh, I look, he looked kind of like an asshole. You didn't like it, huh? I, I mean, I'm not saying it's dirty. You know, I love that aggressive stuff. I know you do. I know, but but no, I didn't like it. So okay, but that's fair of you. You're you're uh, you're you're. It might sound like you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. You're not. You love that stuff. But from the fandom of Webb, as a Webb personal fan, as his guy, you didn't like that it happened to him. So you liked that it happened. You just didn't want to happen to him. Exactly. Okay, that's perfect. I mean, that's a that's a completely. But it seemed like it seemed like Barsha was like kind of picking on Webb a lot. I mean, even in the heat race, uh, Uh, and then and then the brake checking kind of late, which I don't. I don't know if that was a break. I don't know if you saw on Instagram. My buddy Lonnie posted a photo of that, and he had a red turtle shell behind Cooper. He said, (laughs) he said that's what got him. I know what you're saying is they were around each other a lot and Barsha was getting the better end of all, most of it. And you're just like, come on, man. And, and, but yeah, that's, I guess that's kind of the point. Like for Cooper, again, if, if he can't find a, that next level speed and go and just straight up, try to check out on these guys, then he might have to fight off Barsha again and Anderson again and Eli and maybe Plessinger is a little bit better on this. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if Cooper can't run the lead pace and be able to go and check out from those groups, or from that group, then dude, he's probably going to be in a pretty messy fight in the top five. The well, well these to dudes better not. The, he, yeah, they don't want to wake the dragon either because you know your boy will wake up and and he can give it back just as well as they can give it. Oh, I, I know, I know he can. Oh, and then um, back to your question though, I don't think any of these guys are gunning for him consciously, but I think subconsciously as a rider, it, it's the points leader in front of you, the guy with all the hype, the guy that's. One of the most races, if he's in front of you and you're a little faster, like I think you naturally have a little bit of an extra. You know what I mean? And it's not because it's him, the person, like you're going after him, Cooper Webb. I think it's because you're going after the points leader. He's the fastest guy. He's all the hype. He's all the story. And he's sitting in front of me. Like I'm going to, I'm going after him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think they would have done it to Kenny too. If Kenny was the lead dog, they, I mean, I, I think if you're Barsha or you're Anderson or you're Sexton, any chance you have to put one on the points leader, and flex a little, I, you do it just because they, they're the man uh, and you want to knock off the man. So I, I, I don't think there was anything out of line. I know you didn't like it cause it was your guy, but I don't think Barsha did anything out of line other than, I mean, he rode a really wide bike. I will say that I had somebody do DM me and said that he is a more polished freezy, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I found to be kind of funny. Uh-huh. Um, but Barsha dude, he's, 
he's one of the best defensive riders I've ever seen. I mean, how much Bruce has Eli had to eat this year? Like a hundred laps. Think back to like Indy, dude. He was just stuck behind Barsha. So if you get behind Barsha and he's in the mood, like you're you're not getting around him really. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. a good fighter. Yeah, you're gonna have a bad so, time. Cooper just happened to be behind the wrong guy and he found it late, but didn't just once he found it, it was him. And if he would have got him, the next was Anderson. And you're not going to have a very fun time with that guy either. Hey, and speaking especially of, if you land, especially if you land on him, then you're going to really have a hard time. Oh, you have bad time. You're going to hear some bad words. Yeah, that was, that was rough. Um, speaking of Anderson and speaking of flexing, how about that LCQ? Uh, winning by a minute and 42 seconds. Dude, that was embarrassing. For like, that's the difference between a top tier and everybody else. Wow. I never thought of it that way. But so what you're saying is him being in there and not just cruising. Cause remember Wilson won one once he cruised. I think yeah. Even Savachi may have cruised one in. So you're saying the fact that Anderson, who was obviously pissed off, super pissed. The fact that he rode that LCQ at main event level speed and put like the biggest gap. So you're saying that big gap is just was not a good look. Oh my God. Like for everybody else. No, like, the, yeah, he was, he rode so pissed. Like he just wanted to get over with as soon as possible. That was, that was a schooling for everybody else in that LCQ. Like you wouldn't believe, man. I was like, geez, uh, that uh, was, that was a major flex right, right there. It was. Well, let's talk about the flex before that. <laughs> uh, so you want me to say what he said? Uh yeah, you you could say it now, right? I'll bleep it. Are you gonna use the, are you gonna use the bleeper? <laughs> sure. Uh no, I'm not gonna do it because I don't know if I trust you. I think you'll leave it off just to get me one because I, I, <laughs> I think you're sneaky like that. So, um, a lot of f words. A lot of f words. A lot of f words. Uh, I think every letter got a little in there. I thought he was gonna hit him, dude. I was like, he's gonna hit him, <laughs> like Pike did to free seat. Yeah, just yeah. Give him one. Yeah. Oh man, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he used every letter of the alphabet in a bad way. Um, and then A Ray, A Ray, because I went and talked to him. A Ray was like, "Dude, I feel so bad. Like I, like I don't want to land on Jason Anderson." He's like, I, "I'm running front pace." And and to A Ray's point, A Ray had a point, and I'd like to make it for him because obviously he's not going to get a chance to really defend himself, at least to the masses on the broadcast. So he doesn't fully get to express himself. But he said, "Man." I'm in that rhythm section up with the front guys. It's Jason Anderson, who's the fastest qualifier today. I'm thinking he's going to go 3-3-3, no problem. So I get into my rhythm, and once you're in the rhythm, it's hard to get out of the rhythm. It's not easy to just stop and not triple out. So when he goes to triple out, he's thinking it's going to be all fine. The ruts were getting bad, so he just he a raid a little, <laughs> a lot. He got cross rutted and he swerved, but he said, dude, he's like, it's, I'm assuming that Anderson's going to be fine. And then once I committed, I'm committed and I got cross rutted. Like what, what am I supposed to do other than just, you know, it was an accident. And obviously for Alex, the bad part is that it's Alex, right? If that would have been Kyle Chisholm who did it, Anderson probably wouldn't even have said anything. And no one would be like giving Kyle Chisholm a hard time because Chisholm doesn't do things like that. So that's the problem is like, you know, the reputation goes a long way. Freesey gets hit so much just because of the things he's done in the past. Even when it's not really his fault, he'll still get a bunch of hate, you know? And for A-Ray, everyone knows. He goes cattywampus. He loves it. He admits it. So when he goes cattywampus onto the top of Jason Anderson, Anderson's going to be mad. A lot of fans are going to be mad. And it's just like, it's unfortunate because it's A-Ray. And I, you know, I I have a personal uh, affection for A-Ray, so I feel bad for him. But I just thought it'd be okay to defend him a little, Joe. Is that is that fair? I mean, that's I mean, that's a fair take, right? It absolutely is a fair take, and all of that makes sense. Uh, you know, A Ray's a beloved character in the sport. Fans love him. Critics love him. You he's, know. A little, he's a little loose. He's, he's a, a loosey loose. loosey goosey, but people like that about him, and he's got a good attitude about it. However, when you get, as you say, Caddy Wampus, which is a hilarious word, uh, w- when you get Caddy Wampus on a guy like Jason Anderson, who is probably already terrified of being landed on you know, because of his past oh, history, like donations. Oh God, I forgot about the that. The guy suffering from PTSD. So of all the people to land oh. on is the one guy who's actually afraid oh. of getting landed on. I totally forgot about that. And the so. Donations. I, oh my God. Joe, I good think, memory, bro. I think, J- memory. I think Jason's like anger was probably so, oh like my God. a little bit of a flashback. Like you mother. 
Like, ah, not again. <laughs> God, I forgot about that crash. That was horrible. Wow. So, yeah, he's been landing on. <laughs> I'm laughing because he's okay. I'm, all right. If there's anybody out there that it, it's not distasteful, Jason's our guy and he's okay, which is good. But, God, he did. He was the one that got landed on. So, that's just, that's two in a row. So, you're right. He's probably extra pissed. Yeah. I, extra I, pissed. Extra pissed. And he took it out on that LCQ and just, you know, like once he got out front past that one dude, he was just gone. He's just like, you know, what did he do? Lap up to second place? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah that was, was wild. In, insane. It was fun to watch though. Yeah, he was he was shredding. Um, what do you think about his podium interview then um saying sorry to Ray? Because I I have a thought on it. Well, I said it on Blair's breakdown, but I'll say it on here too. But I want to hear your thought first. I thought it was a class act. Uh, I thought he's aware of what it looks like on camera and he knows that the the rumors are already flying before they even hit the checkered flag on shit like that. And so uh, I thought it was classy. Okay, that's that's where I sit too. I'm gonna take it one step further, though. Well, no, you said it, but I'm gonna just make it a little bit more uh, mischievous, uh, strategic. All right. <laughs> so he he was classy for sure. He is very aware. Probably, I'm sure when he got back to his uh, truck, they're probably like, "Hey, buddy." So the broadcast uh, just showed you screaming at A Ray over and over and over. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not the best looking. He's probably like, oh, man, like, dang it. I, dang it. They got that. Okay. So Jason being pretty smart, like, I think he's a low key, like the smartest dude, like probably the smartest dude out there. He's like, man, I feel bad. I'm going to cover this up and say, I'm sorry to A-Ray for overreacting. But he did throw in a, I still don't like what happened. I'm not saying what happened was right. Like he made sure that he said, like, he's pretty much saying that was BS, but Okay, I was a little overreacting. Yeah, he's like, you know I'm, not, I mean? like I'm not condoning the behavior, but it, I understand it. Yeah, but instead of like apologizing, oh, I just want to say sorry. Then it's like you're almost owning that you were like, like completely at fault for it, or something, you know what I mean? It just it makes the whole narrative shift. So Jason being strategic is like, I'm going to control this. I'm going to make sure everyone knows that that still sucked. Yeah, but I overreacted. So I just I thought it was very creative uh, the way he did it. So natural too. He's just smart like that. He's very, very, uh, mm. I, th- I think he's very smart. When I heard good that, point. I was like, mm-hmm. good job, buddy. Like very, <laughs> very, uh, slick, um, brand manager, he, brand manager. He needs to go, he needs to go right over to Justin Cooper and have a talk. That's all I'm saying. Like just <laughs> Jason, that's how you handle it. Like Jason did you, he might not even believe what he said. Yeah. Um, actually we debated this too. Remember when he took Kenny yep. out at and, he apo- yeah, years and he, back? yeah, and he apologized for that. He's like, I don't like to race that way. We argued about, is that, does he really feel that way? Or does he like, I'm just going to say the right thing. And I'm glad I put him down. You know what I mean? Yeah. We argued about that like years ago. Yep. Same guy. Wow. I'm going to have some, I'm going to have some PTSD on this show, dude. I'm like <laughs> seriously, I'm flashbacks. Um, which again, I want to say I'm being sensitive about that too. That's not nice to talk crap on. So, uh, anyways, um, what else? Four fifty class. Um, so, okay. oh, let me just ask you this. Let me just ask you this, and try to keep yourself out of you know, keep yourself away from your fandom I'll of try. the guys that I'm talking about. What do you think the percentage is at fault, A Ray versus Anderson? Because they went down. They both went down, and. If you're Jason, you got to take a little bit of fault. I believe a little, right? You didn't do the obstacle that everyone does that you do. You made a mistake. So th- you get a little bit of fault. Um, but at the same time, like majority A Ray, right? I mean, wh- where, do, where do you sit percentage wise? Yeah, I would say somewhere in the 90% A Ray. But I, I hear what you're saying because similar, and I, I weren't, of course, we've been over this a thousand times. So as everybody, similar to the donation thing, Anderson got jumped on because he rolled that. And so he did a strange little rhythm. Maybe he messed up on the rhythm of that, which caused a Ray to you, like you already described. So yeah, I would say 90, 10. Okay. That's where I sit too. I said, I just can't, you can't throw it all on a Ray because one of the baddest dudes in the sport didn't triple, triple, triple right in front of you. So you got to, you know, I still think a Ray had the time to make a decision not to, but there was no reason for him to not triple. He just miscalculated. Uh, the triple he just messed up on it yeah so but jason being there was there he was there at the landing underneath a ray at that point because he didn't execute a section that he normally does that's why again i i'm with you i think 90 10 yeah you want to sit on that yeah we but you want to agree yeah okay all right 90 10 um the big thing what else Uh, the, the the biggest thing i guess now is moving forward since there was 
Um, <clears throat> you know, we talked about Webb and, and all of the issues surrounding last night's race. Now with the points being what they are, um, what did we say is a is a thirteen point difference now? Yeah, thirteen. So so um, obviously it was a very bad night for Webby and uh, mm-hmm. and a and a good mm-hmm. night for K Rock. Uh, what what where, where what's happening moving forward prediction wise? Um, well, you know you, you know how in the, in the NFL you know week fourteen or week fifteen there's a team that's like sliding they're messing they're you know. They're having a bad couple run, and they're like, this is the big game. They need this win. This is a must-win game, you know, like week 15 or something like that. Yep. And then some teams, it's like, man, they're on a roll. They've won five straight, but here's the big challenge. Now you're going into New England. Like, this is the game. There's always that week in the series where, or the schedule where you're like, man, this is the one. In my opinion, this is the one. Uh, it really is the one because you're at 13 – Kenny can get this to single digits, and if you can get it to single digits, you go to Utah with a with a legit shot, like a, like a real good shot. Like you can almost control your destiny shot. You can go there and take care of business and get it done. If you go further away from thirteen and Cooper gets it back to sixteen to twenty, now you're going into Utah just trying not to get clinched on. You know what I mean? Like you don't want Cooper to clinch around early. So this is the one. This this is the one that's going to tell the story for the final chapter. Because if Ken Roxon can get it close, closer, all the momentum is with him going into the final two rounds in the same building. If Cooper bounces back and finds a way to, to respond and beat Kenny and it goes back the other way, I think it's over. Because you go to Utah, Cooper was really good in Utah last year. He won more, he, won, he had more points than anybody in Utah last year, even Eli. So, and I know the Eli fans like Toolman Dan and his army will say, oh, well, Eli was managing a championship, whatever. I'm stats or stats, Dan. Cooper is good in Utah, really good. So, you don't want him 16 plus points out because he's, he's going to control it all the way into the checkered flag. You get him under 10, dude, you got a shot, like a legit shot, because then the pressure is on and he has to be almost perfect. So, this is the one that will really dictate how the final two are approached. And um, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm doing my job as a, as a hype man here for the sport, but am I wrong, Joe? This it's, it's either on or it's not. And we're going to find out on Saturday, straight up what happens between Cooper and Kenny. That it's, that's, that's the story between them two who leaves there, uh, who leaves there with the advantage, Kenny, because you got it under 10 or Cooper, because you got it over 15. That's, that's everything to me. So this is the linchpin race. This is like, uh, this is the do or die. This is the one that, that is going to change the course of the, the remaining remainder of the season. Yeah. So this is it. I agree. A hundred percent. This is the one. Man, so uh, a lot of pressure coming this Saturday. Yeah. For both. I saw Kenny today. I talked to him for a little bit. He was just cruising around. He's in his motor home. Um, you know, a lot of these riders stay in their RVs. It's just, you know, better than, so I saw him and he's just cruising around with this dog, riding a scooter and just, dude, he's got like a, some kind of a little stereo system on his scooter. So it's like cruising around with a little music playing. What was he, what music was he listening to? Oh, I don't remember. I picture like, like really industrial German techno or something. No, I, he likes Machine Gun Kelly. I know he's like buddies with that guy. So I, I uh. think he kind of likes a little bit of that. His opening ceremonies video is maybe Blink. Or no, Offspring? Yeah, I think Offspring, dude. I think he's got Offspring as his opening ceremonies music. So, now nah, Kenny, I think Kenny's pretty with it. <laughs> you just, <laughs> some, what would you call it? What'd you call the music? Like, techno, techno what? Like industrial techno. Like, uh, like rave music? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like Nightwish without the chick singer. <laughs> yeah, um, <just clears throat> super anyways, dink. Dance so yeah, you're right though. It's uh, it's on Joe. It's on on Saturday, and then 250 class. Like, does McAdoo? Like, what's he do, dude? How, how's he feeling in the next three days? Like, how, does he come out and, I mean, get it done? Does he win? Does I mean, dude, the guys. Wow. If That's all he, I gotta say. If he wins, I mean, if he takes it all the way, to like you know, the the, the whole, whole shebang. <laughs> the title. Thing. Yeah. That will be incredible. That would be an incredible yeah, story. Yeah, insane. Yeah. Insane, right? I, I mean, wow. I mean, he kept himself in it. So that's, 
Wow. All right. Well, uh, Joe, I'm going to go to bed. It is late out here on the East Coast. So uh, good show. What are we going to call it? Um, Lynchpin? I think that's a cool word, man. Lynchpin. My name, if my parents didn't name me Thrasher, I'd, uh, I'd want to be named Lynchpin. <laughs> All how right. would you spell it? Is, how is it spelled? I don't know. I'll have to look it up and see. Lynchpin. Lynchpin, though. Do we call it Lynchpin? All right. That's what we'll do. Uh, I like it. Or do we call it Salty? Salty was cool. Salty. Nah. I feel like we've Surprise me. Used that Surprise before. me, Joe. But I, I, I vote Lynchpin because right. that's uh, what I wish my last name was. Well, you get what you want. All right, Joe. And uh, good job on thanking them sponsors in and out of the show. I know it's my job. I'm supposed to do that. But uh, to be honest, you do it better than I do. The sponsors have told me that. So <laughs> uh, good job crushing Stop that. It. And screw you, Andy Gregg. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, good talking to you, bro. And I'll see you on Sunday, dude. You know, we have a new guest coming in Sunday. Oh, a nice. new guest. Oh, yeah. Cam Zink is coming in the studio on Sunday. And it's going to be fun because I, I don't know him very well i know of him and he knows of me but we don't like we don't like know each other and uh, but he wants to come on and talk supercross he loves made of at moto and uh so he's coming in sunday joe we got cam zinc coming in dope all right bro well good times i'll see you in a couple days all right buddy later bro peace and there it is episode 193 has come to a close boys and girls once again thank you to fly racing mika medals motosport.com Scott Goggles, No Toil, Guts Racing, EMT Racing, Blenzall, All-American Chevy of Colleen, Old Me Creations, DRS Suspension, and our new buddies, Unita. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week. Main event mode. Ah, screw it. You know it by now.